morning and welcome to Shattering Myths, a program dev- excuse me, devoted to those who know that there's something dreadfully wrong with the political and religious institutions which govern and influence our nation, who recognize the considerable malfeasance inherent in the media, the military, and global economic influences. We realize that these human institutions are the problem, which means that they cannot be the solution. <laughs> that is ever more reinforced as we listen to the news. Therefore, our mission is to look behind the headlines so that we know who is perpetrating the tragedies that are besieging our planet. Because based upon this current plague of adverse political, religious, military, and economic influence, we have at most 15 years until all hell is unleashed, a complete and and total economic collapse. World War, unrelenting propaganda, and the death of billions. As a result, in our second hour, we're going to engage God on his terms through evidence and reason, since his guidance regarding his covenant provides the only escape from what will be a dreadful existence on this planet. Our phone number, if you'd like to participate in this discussion, is 877-300-7645. I have two comments on the uh, the news. First is the last one where uh, Senator uh, John McClown from Arizona uh, said that he was uh, planning on voting in favor of a discrimination um, bill that uh, is uh, received 100% support from Democrats, which means they're monolithic, which means they're not expressing uh, their free will. I have a real issue with uh, with this, and my issue is that that while Job discrimination uh, against a race is inappropriate, eh, within reason. I mean, as I was talking uh, briefly during the uh, the break with uh, Dan, the producer of these shows, Monday through Wednesday, is that, you know, if you run a Chinese restaurant, you ought to be able to have uh, Asian uh, help, particularly in the kitchen. The same thing would be true with a, uh, a Mexican uh, restaurant. But with uh, with very few exceptions, discrimination based upon on something like one's skin color is uh, is inappropriate. Got no issue with uh, laws in that regard. I think age discrimination can be appropriate in, in certain instances. We ought not be hiring people whose bodies are beginning to break down to uh, to act uh, in jobs like uh, in the fire department where where physical prowess is uh, is required. Um, we ought not be uh, giving 18-year-olds uh, guns when their ability uh, to exercise good judgment isn't fully development, uh, developed and give them, uh, uh, allow them into police departments. So there should be some age discrimination. But what someone chooses to do relative to their sexuality uh, ought to have uh, nothing to do with the job. We ought not protect it, we ought not be even discussing it. What someone chooses to do behind closed doors in their apartment or their home is their business, and it's not anyone else's business, and there ought not be laws based upon whether you choose to have uh, the sex with your wife, a, uh, a partner of the opposite um, uh, gender, or husband, wife or husband, depending if you're male or female, you're uh, someone of the other um, of the other gender or uh, same gender, or with a chimpanzee. You know, it ought to be your affair. And when we try to make uh, it a discriminatory uh, act, or as uh, Senator John McClown says, this is similar to the civil rights le- legislation, which was racial, then we have really lost our way. When sexual preference becomes a uh, an item to uh, to protect, the other issue that I had trouble with in this uh, morning's news is uh, is the uh, buffoon that uh, doesn't want to give uh, uh, Edward Snowden asylum. He wants him to uh, come back here and stand up for the crime that he has committed. Edward Snowden didn't commit a crime. He is uh, a hero. He's a man that revealed that our government was committing crimes against us. Every congressman, every senator, everyone that's engaged in uh, the Bush or uh, the Obama administrations, they are the criminals. They enabled a system that was in wholesale and continues to be in wholesale violation of the U.S. Constitution to the Fourth Amendment. They did so knowingly, purposefully, and they continue to support it. The criminals are in Washington, not in Russia. Speaking of uh, criminals, 
Uh, there was a time when a politician, when a politician lied uh, egregiously, that they were held accountable. But that time seems to have passed. President Barack Hussein Obama has uh, rep repeatedly assured Americans that after his Affordable Care Act became law, that people who liked their health insurance would be able to keep it. He knew it wasn't true when he said it. He knows it isn't true now, and he's unwilling to own up that this was a purposeful act to completely disable private insurance and to make everyone dependent upon government. That's the point. That's what his Health and Human Services Department wrote into the law. It is unavoidable, and therefore he lied in assaulting the American people this way. I view it very similarly to uh, Johnson, um, LBJ, lying about the Gulf of Tonkin incident to engage Americans in the Vietnam War. I look at it very similarly to Woodrow Wilson lying to the American people about the Lusitania, luring Americans into the First World War. When George Bush lied about the yellow cake uranium purchase and the smoking gun being a nuclear bomb and the involvement of al-Qaeda in Iraq to lure Americans into that war, it is very similar, using lies to promote an assault on others and the American people. In this particular case, the assault is at a place very near and dear to Americans' hearts, their health care. And yet this president knew, knew absolutely and unequivocally that the language that had been written in his own administration in the Department of Health and Human Services made it impossible for any American that was self-employed, who uh, was uh, part of a small family business and who had purchased their own health insurance doing the right thing, being responsible, paying their own bills, would not be able to keep that policy, and the new policy that, it would, that would replace it would be unaffordable. So why did he promote it? Millions of Americans are getting or about to get cancellation letters for their health insurance under Obamacare, and the Obama administration has known that they would receive these cancellations for three years now. This according to NBC News. Four sources uh, deeply involved in the what's called the Affordable Care Act, which is the antithesis of affordable, tell NBC News that 75% of the 14 million Americans who buy their own insurance individually can expect to receive a cancellation letter or the equivalent over the next year because their existing policies don't meet the standards mandated by Obama's new health care law. That's 75% over the next year. Of the remaining 25%, within two years, 100% of those will also have their policies canceled. And they say that many of those will be forced to either buy much pricier policies for which they will experience sticker shop, uh, shock or they will go uninsured. And they will actually pay a penalty now to the U.S. government because they're not able to afford the government's new standard in health insurance. Now, none of this comes as a shock to the Obama administration. The law states that uh, policies in effect as of March 23, 2010, would be grandfathered, meaning that consumers could keep those policies even if they don't meet the new requirements of the law. But even as NBC News writes, the Department of Health and Human Services, under the Obama administration, wrote regulations that narrowed that provision by saying that if any part of a policy was changed since that date, the deductible, the copay, the benefits, the policy would not be grandfathered. Moreover, it is an infinitesimal percentage of health insurance policies that are active for more than three years, which would be a requirement under these circumstances. Most all policies are annual events. 
Buried in the Obamacare regulations from July 2010 is an estimate that because of the normal turnover in individual insurance markets, they claim that, that about 60% of policies have less than a one-year duration. The overwhelming majority of consumers will not be able to keep their policy. Yet, even in writing their own legislation, the Obama administration publicly acknowledged in writing that the overwhelming majority of Americans would not be able to keep their current policy while the president was lying to the American people in this regard. And because many policies have been changed since that key date, the percentage of the individual market policies losing grandfather status in any given year exceeds 75%. That means that the administration knew that three-quarters of those in the individual market would not be able to keep their plans even if they liked them. Now, this, of course, is important because these are the Americans doing the right thing. These are the Americans that are actually paying for their own health insurance. This is the American we ought to be rewarding. We ought to be giving these, these Americans special benefits because they're doing the right thing. Instead, they're the ones that are being punished by the new plan. The ones being rewarded are the deadbeats, those who do not pay anything for their health insurance. But I'm going to tell you that the problem is much bigger than those Americans who are engaged in small business, who are self-employed, and who do the right thing and pay for their own policy. Because all of them are being abused by this administration, almost all of them middle-class Americans. Very soon, 50% of Americans are going to feel the sting of Obamacare. You see, 50% of Americans receive their insurance by way of their uh, business, their employer. This, too, has been mandated by the U.S. government, transferring the cost of social programs to business, very much like the forcing business to be the tax collector by with making withholdings on uh, payments and, and going through elaborate schemes to be able to properly withhold and transfer taxes from the employee to the U.S. government. Well, in health insurance, they're mandated that they must provide health insurance, but now with the new standard, the policies which they have paid that have already made them uncompetitive in the international markets will be exasperated. These businesses will very soon have very narrow and highly undesirable options at their disposal, and 50% of Americans are about to feel the sting of that. to Shattering Mist. The reason that we're continuing uh, to cover this story, uh, just like the story of man-made uh, global warming, uh, is that the, there is a tremendous tax or consequence to the American people uh, that between these two events will be the final two straws that, uh, that sink uh, America uh, economically. The, with the man-made global warming, there will either be a carbon tax or a uh, cap-and-trade uh, tax. Uh, that uh, will be debilitating for uh, both uh, uh, homeowners and for business uh, owners. Uh, and in the case of, uh, and it's all based upon a lie, and in the case of the Affordable Care Act, by making health care unaffordable, uh, th those who are responsible and were paying for their health insurance will no longer be able to afford it. And second, or even have it, and second, those um, uh, who receive their benefits from business, they're now, those businesses are faced with a choice. As soon as each of those policies uh, renew and they are no longer in compliance with the new government standard, they will either have to uh, 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 absorb a doubling or tripling of the, uh, of the premiums, which they can't do, uh, pass on the premiums to the employee, which should be a disastrous uh, influence on the economy and also on them, reduce the employee's salaries, or let employees go. And those, those are the consequences when you start meddling as a nation globally in a free enterprise system. The politicians who are dunderheads economically meddled in the free enterprise system relative to home loans and caused the Great Recession that we're still 
trying to work our way out of and have not yet, and yet this is the single biggest government expenditure. Um, the government is doing everything it can to exacerbate the problem to make health care unaffordable for the American taxpayer, sinking the nation economically while also attacking individuals who were paying for their own insurance and making it impossible for businesses to continue to provide private insurance for their employees while mandating that they do what is economically impossible. And yet President Obama, who promised in 2009, if you like your health plan, you'll be able to keep your health plan, knowing full well that it was a lie, is still saying, was still saying in 2012, if you already have health insurance, you'll be able to keep your health insurance. It was absolutely, unequivocally untrue. And he knew it to be untrue, and his department had made certain that it would be untrue. This says that when they made the promise, they knew that most of the people in the uh, uh, in America could not keep what they had and then wrote the rules to make certain of it, said Robert uh, Lazinski of the Health Policy and Strategy Associates, a consultant who works for health insurance firms. So this notion that the health insurance industry was in cahoots with the Obama administration to perpetrate the Affordable Care Act is an outright lie. In fact, the people that I know who are senior executives within the largest health care providers like Blue Cross, Blue Shield, uh, have all said that the moment the Affordable Care Act passed, they began looking at ways to divest themselves of their primary business. They recognized that it would be impossible to continue on as a private health care insurance provider. So rather than them being in cahoots to say, hey, this is great, let's do this in, uh, in collaboration with the Obama administration, they knew that the Affordable Care Act would destroy the private health care industry. And it will. Lozinski estimates that 80% of the individual market will not be able to keep their current policies and will have to buy insurance that meets the requirements of the new law, which means and requires a richer package of benefits, much higher in premiums than the policies today. The White House does not dispute that most in the individual market will lose their current coverage, but argues that it, they will be offered better coverage in its place, and they will get tax subsidies, which will offset the increased costs. If Americans are going to universally get tax subsidies that increase the doubling or tripling of their health care, then the government is instantly going to have a increase in its annual deficit that will probably increase that deficit by 50%, another $500 billion added annually, all passing on that deficit to our children a deficit that will crater the nation in less than 20 years. And if the government does not offset that cost, then all of the Americans that paid for their own insurance will no longer have insurance. And the fact is that the government will make certain that it punishes success by precluding uh, any offset or the increased costs be given to anyone who runs their own business, is self-employed, is barely making ends meet in this troubled economy. Again, rewarding failure, making sure that the only ones that get this Cadillac insurance are those who don't pay for it. to uh, consider the uh, Affordable Care Act, which is uh, the antithesis of that. It's free care for those who don't pay for it and unaffordable care for those who have in the past uh, been responsible. White House spokesperson uh, Jessica Santillo lied by saying, quote, nothing in the Affordable Care Act forces people out of their health plans. The law allows plans that covered people at the time the law was enacted to continue to offer that same coverage to the same enrollees. Nothing has changed, and that coverage can continue into 2014, she lied. It's If you go back five or six years ago, when I was examining the 
the malfeasance of the Bush administration. It seemed as if it would be impossible to have a worse president than George W. Bush. And he lied to get America into Afghanistan, lied uh, uh, to justify his invasion of Iraq. Those were absolute disastrous decisions based upon lies. He uh, took a $300 billion government surplus and turned it into a $1.4 trillion deficit, sealing the country's uh, economic fate. Hard to imagine a worse president. And yet, um, Barack Hussein Obama is worse. Almost everything he and his administration say is the antithesis of the truth. He is a dunderhead economically, complete disaster for America. He is a disaster for America religiously, promoting Islam. He is a disaster for America politically, um, inciting what is nothing but economic status warfare. Uh, it's impossible to find a worse individual than the current president of the United States. And maybe I'll be proved wrong again. But here this uh, administration official just blatantly lied when she said nothing in the Affordable Care Act forces people out of their plans. There isn't a single plan that people have that the Affordable Care Act doesn't force them out of. With This year it will be 75%. Next year, the remaining 25%. There won't be anyone who's able to keep their current plan. And moreover, health insurance plans are not written for four years, or five years, or six years. Most, most health insurance plans aren't even for a full year. She knowingly, deliberately lied and Recently, this is a lie that has been perpetrated after the facts have been disclosed. Now, experts said that most consumers in the individual market will not be able to keep their policies. Nancy Thompson, senior vice president of CBIZ Benefits, which helps companies manage their employee benefits, says that the numbers in this market are hard to pin down, but the data from states and carriers suggests that three-quarters of the individual policyholders will get cancellations within a year. Kansas Insurance Commissioner Sally Prager, who chairs the health committee at the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, says that the estimate is probably wrong. Right. And folks, this the, the canary in the uh, in the mine shaft here, dying of the silent and uh, and odorless release of methane gas, which is deadly. Of this Affordable Care Act, are the individuals who are small business owners or self-employed who are buying their own and have over the years buy, bought and paid for their own health insurance, chosen what they wanted in coverage, negotiated what they were willing to pay, and received a policy that suited their interest that they could afford. They are the first victims. All of them are losing their policies. Now, what's going to happen when the same standard of you have to have this universal Cadillac assemblage of health care because that's what Obama wanted to offer those who pay nothing for it. Someone that, that illegally comes into the United States and 15 minutes later, or even legally immigrates to the United States and 15 minutes later, at no cost to them, receives a full tranche of the best health care in the world at no cost to them. He wanted to make certain that they were offered everything which means that those policies that business is offering, most of which do not have provisions in all ten areas now mandated by the new law, will either have their premiums doubled or tripled, or will have the co-payments that the employee has to pay go from nothing or a modicum of, uh, of, uh, of dollars up into the multiples of thousands of dollars, or they'll simply have to lay off their employees. Those are their options. Devastatingly destructive. Those getting cancellation letters are often shocked. They are very unhappy. Here are some examples. This is according to NBC News. George Schwab, 62, of North Carolina, said he was perfectly happy with his plan from Blue Cross Blue Shield, which also insured his wife for a $228 monthly premium. But this last September, he was surprised to receive a letter saying that his policy was no longer available. The comparable plan the insurance company offered him carried a $1,200 
uh, monthly premium, so from 228 to $1,200, five times, almost six times, and a $5,500 deductible. Welcome to the Affordable Care Act. And the best option he found on the exchange so far offered a 415% jump in premiums. That's four times the premium amount to $948 a month from 228 He said the plan doesn't meet my needs and it's unaffordable. I'm sitting here looking at this thinking we ought to just pay the fine that the government's going to impose on us for not having health insurance anymore and then pay the bills when we get sick, Schwab said. Everybody's worried about whether the website works or not, but that's fixable. That's just the tip of the iceberg. The very nature of this law isn't fixable, he said, and he's right. And it's just beginning. Wait until business has to deal with this. Already uncompetitive in world markets, which is why America is no longer the leading manufacturing nation, and it was passed by China. It's the reason that our cars don't sell in, in meaningful numbers internationally anymore is that too much of the health care cost is, uh, is a burden in them, and that's going to go up appreciably. You know, and there's a bigger problem in all of this. I was talking with my wife. We are. We have a, uh, a small business. Uh, we provide uh, health insurance for our employees, even though we're not large enough to be mandated uh, into doing it. We've just uh, had to hugely reduce what kind of insurance we could offer because the bill came in at, uh, at almost doubling what the original premium was. Couldn't afford the, uh, the new uh, premium, so we had to reduce options. We had to coverage and we had to uh, increase the co-payment uh, amounts for ourselves and for our employees. And the problem is you can't just self-insure. In most cases, I'd prefer to self-insure. You know, the nature of health insurance is that you get back an average of about 65 cents on the dollar. You know, with life insurance, you get back about 85 cents on the dollar. Health insurance, it's about 65 cents on the dollar because of all of the the extraordinary costs involved in it and the risks and calls involved in it. And uh, therefore, uh, you're better off to self-insure, except you can't self-insure because of one of the great calamities of the uh, of government regulation. Uh, and the, the nature of health insurance is such, or health care is such, that because the government has chosen to only pay 60 cents on the dollar in Medicaid and Medicare, the Businesses, if they don't have supplemental and or healthcare providers, if they, if the uh, individual doesn't have supplemental insurance, can't take them as patients without losing money because the government only pays them pays 60% of the bill. Therefore, they have to go after someone to survive, someone else to pay the bills. With the uh, with the insurance companies, the insurance companies also negotiate a rate that is uh, at least workable for the health care providers and for hospitals. And so what, the, what do the health care providers and hospitals do if you don't have insurance? If you aren't part of the government program, they charge you 50% more than they charge those who are insured and those who come in uh, with the government Medicaid and Medicare program. So you can't afford to self-insure because you're charged a much higher rate if you are trying to be responsible and pay the bill yourself. So you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Welcome to the world of government meddling. Heather uh, Goldwater, 38, of South Carolina, is raising a new baby while her own PR, uh, while running her own PR firm. She said she received a letter last July from Cigna, her health insurance company, and said the company would no longer be offering uh, her individual plan. Similarly, Richard uh, Heldgren, a Lansing, Michigan retiree, said that he was irate when he received a letter informing him that he and his wife uh, Amy's $550, $559 a month plan was being changed because of the Affordable Care Act. The plan uh, the insurer offered raised his deductible from zero to $2,500. 
He said that he never believed President Obama's promise that people would be able to keep their current plans. I heard him say it many times. I didn't believe him when I heard him say it because there was just no way that was going to happen. They wrote the regulations so strictly that none of the old policies came grandfather. For months, Blazinski said that uh, she uh, has warned that some consumers will face a sticker shock. He, uh, uh, he, I should say, he recently got his own notice that he and his wife cannot keep their current policy, which he described as one of the best, one of the so-called Cadillac plans that were being condemned by the Obama administration. They condemned those who had Cadillac health insurance plans, and then they offered even more Cadillac full-featured plans to those who are paying nothing for them by way of the U.S. government burdening the taxpayers. Now he said the best comparable plan he found for 2014 has not only a smaller doctor network and larger out-of-pocket costs, the premium increase is 67%. Mr. President, I liked the coverage I had. It is the best health insurance policy that I could buy, and he's an expert in this field. This is what he does for a living. After receiving a letter from her insurance plan that it was being discontinued, Deborah Pesisco, a 58-year-old lawyer in the district, found a comparable plan on the city's new health insurance exchange, but her monthly premium, now 297 would be increased $165 a month. Her out-of-pocket costs were going to double. She was going to end up paying $5,000 more and does not know how. She says, it is just not fair. She said, this is ridiculous. If the poor and uninsured are the winners under the Affordable Care Act, they receive unaffordable health care and contribute nothing for it. The losers include healthy middle class, middle income, small business owners, and others who are self-employed or who are engaged in family businesses. Why did we go after those individuals? And <laughs> Welcome back to Shattering Mess. Uh, this is uh, uh, a scathing indictment, but... Uh, the reality is that the uh, the poor and the uninsured are winners in the Affordable Care Act. They receive what is essentially unaffordable health care and contribute nothing for it. And the losers are healthy, middle-class, small business owners or self-employed workers, those who engage in family businesses who buy their own insurance. They make too much to qualify for federal subsidies provided by the law, but not enough to absorb the rising costs without hardship. Some are too old to go without insurance because they have children or have uh, minor health issues, but they are too young for uh, uh, Medicare. Others are upset because they don't want coverage for services they do not need, and we talked about that. You know, if you're a single man, you don't need maternity coverage. You don't need, uh, uh, in most cases, you don't need pediatric care. If uh, you are like me and you're, um, you avoid uh, drugs, the last thing I want is to be paying for drug rehab plans. I, have, I will never need a drug rehab plan unless uh, they decide that uh, coffee uh, in the morning is a, a drug for which you need to go to rehab. Now, it's just there's so much of, uh, of this. Mental illness is another one of those things that, according to the Affordable Care Act, you have to have. Uh, preventive uh, care so that, you know, you, I don't know if you go to your yoga class or whatever. You know, I, I don't want preventative care classes. I'm not going to engage in them. I don't want class. I don't want coverage for uh, psychiatric uh, therapy. I don't want coverage for maternity. My, my wife's had a hysterectomy. I've had a vasectomy. You know, the last thing my wife and I need, and I'm, you know, in my uh, mid to late uh, 50s, as is my wife, the last thing we need is uh, to be paying for maternity coverage. You know, my wife and I do not uh, drink to excess, and we most certainly don't uh, do drugs. Why should we have to pay for a policy that covers uh, drug rehabilitation? 
you know, if the government wants to cover that, that's their business. I don't like it because they're spending money they don't have. But why impose those mandates on individuals who cannot possibly benefit from them? There are, uh, as they say, this is from Sabrina Corlett. There are definitely winners and losers. She's a senior research fellow at George uh, Town University Center on Health uh, Insurance Reforms. You know, America is in a death spiral because the nation continues to punish success and to discourage and thwart self-reliance and productivity, all while rewarding failure, making the majority dependent and thus easy to control. It was interesting to read uh, day before yesterday when uh, the information was uh, reported. But um, by way of uh, just kind of background, for those that don't know, uh, my last business, the last time I was uh, I employed, apart from doing what I'm doing uh, now and, and writing books and the like, I uh, started an Internet-based retail company. And uh, having them start a business online, I know a fair amount of what it takes to uh, create a, a website that uh, that is comprehensive in terms of and inclusive in terms of its uh, uh, of what it does behind the scenes to make a website work with very complex uh, financial transactions. Uh, and I know what it's like to get reports from uh, that. Uh, uh, activity so that you know moment by moment precisely what's happening. And yet the federal government, <laughs> even spending already $500 million in creating this website, it's clueless. This report from Reuters. Enrollment and in health insurance plans on the troubled Obamacare website was uh, very small in the first couple of days of operation with just 248 Americans signing up according to the documents released on Tuesday by a U.S. House of Representatives committee. Obama's administration has said that it cannot provide enrollment figures from healthcare.gov because it does not have the numbers. Now, mind you, this is a plan that became law and was introduced on October 1st. It is November 4th. And the when I was in this business, we got daily reports. In fact, our reports were such that if you wanted to know the trend, you could plug in live, minute by minute, knowing exactly how many users there were, what those users were uh, buying, how many dollars were being uh, uh, registered throughout this economic solution. Here it is a month later, and the government is clueless. They don't know. The federal web website where residents of 36 states can buy the new health insurance plans under Barack Obama's law. It was launched October 1st, but according to Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, she said, we don't have any reliable data about enrollment. We don't know anything.